everyone, welcome back. It's Ali Albertson again. Um, last time we talked a little bit about uh, 211 and search website resources such as uh, Colorado United Way and um, Psychology Today. Uh, in this next video that we're doing, we're going to look at some state and county benefits uh, such as Medicaid and food stamps or also known as SNAP, uh, transportation benefits and some other stuff that the county offers um, and talk a little bit about how to apply for them and the eligibility process with that. Some important terms for this video are going to be what a household means. So a household is just those within one tax return. Um, a lot of these benefits might ask for apply for everyone in your household. That doesn't mean like a roommate or anything unless you share a tax return. So another term I'm going to mention a lot is the Health and Human Services Department or the Department of Human Services, depending on what county you're in. Um, this just is the place that you can go apply for benefits. It's the department that all your benefits and acceptance goes through. So I might say that a lot as well. The last term I might use a lot is Colorado Peak. That's just the website that people apply for these benefits through. Um, and it's a really useful tool. So I'm going to go over it today with you all. OK, so first we're going to talk a little bit about Medicaid. Um, it's basically just like a health benefit or insurance through the state of Colorado. Um, but the coverage and how you apply goes through the county. And that's the same with the rest of these state benefits as well as it's all um, accepted through whatever county you're in. And then it's uh, usable through that county alone. So if you switch to a different county, you have to update that through the state. Depending on what Medicaid plan you have, it can cover pretty much anything. Uh, or it could have like a 2 to $10 copay, depending on what service you're getting. Um, if you're eligible for Medicaid, of course, limits apply, such as length of stay and all that kind of stuff if you're in the hospital. Um, and just like private insurance, you have to make sure that your provider will take Medicaid as an option for coverage. So just keep that in mind um, when you're applying for Medicaid or using Medicaid. Some of the coverage provided by Medicaid includes dental, vision, um, primary care physician. It can include chemo and radiation, cancer treatments. Um, maternity and newborn care, family planning, mental health, lab services, transportation providers, and just a whole lot more. So um, definitely check out all of the benefits on the Colorado Public Health uh, and Environment website. The rest of the services that Medicaid covers, you can check out more specifically on um, their website. For pregnant women, these services are all free. So that's really cool. I really appreciate that about our Medicaid program. For a little bit more information about benefits, just check out the website. I'll put the link in the description below. Another program related to Medicaid is Medicaid buy-in. So if you're not fully eligible for regular Medicaid, you can still apply for Medicaid buy-in. It's still based off of wages. You pay a monthly payment each month to this program for similar Medicaid coverage, depending on the plan. For more information about Medicaid buy-in, feel free to check out the website that I put in the description, or you can check out the Department of Human Services in your county for just some more information. I also have a graphic here provided by the Department of Healthcare Policy and Financing regarding Medicaid and the eligibility. So this graphic shows the family size and the income eligibility level that is necessary to get Medicaid. Another health benefit provided through the county and the state is the CHP Plus or the Child Health Plan Plus program. Um, it, it provides low cost health and dental insurance for low income children and pregnant women who cannot afford private insurance but might still be eligible for this type of uh, health insurance program. For more information about the CHP Plus program, uh, I've also provided a link in the description below for that as well. Um, the costs and co-pays depend on the income and the size of the family. There might also be an annual enrollment fee ranging from zero to $105 total per year. Shifting gears from health to food options, we have the SNAP program known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which uh, used to be known as food stamps. SNAP is uh, used to help low income individuals or students or families uh, to purchase food throughout the month. Uh, basically how this works is the county will send something called an EBT card where whoever uses it or is eligible for SNAP can use it to buy groceries, just kind of like a debit card. Um, and then those funds are reloaded each month. The amount you get through SNAP just depends on your needs, the size of the household, and the interview that you'll have with the Health and Human Services Department. So in that application process, people do interview um, just to determine what that's going to look like. 
I have another graphic from the state that shows the household size and the income limits for the SNAP program as well. For more information about the SNAP program, feel free to check out the link in the description below. The state of Colorado and lots of counties in Colorado also provide some cash assistance programs for those who need it. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about those as well. The first one here is called AND, or Aid for the Needy and Disabled. This is a temporary financial cash assistance program for people who are waiting on Social Security income, or SSI, um, or is given to those who actively receive SSI but are not given the full benefit. So when people are waiting for SSI, they'll receive their A&D benefits um, until they receive that benefit. Or if they don't receive the full amount from SSI, they can get um, cash assistance to provide up to that maximum income level. One thing about A&D that people need to know is that when you get this benefit, you do need to pay it back to the county at some point when you start receiving your SSI payments. If you end up not being able to get SSI, you do not have to pay back A&D. A and D benefits are also provided through the EBT card, just as the SNAP program is. Since you have to pay back with A and D, it's important to notify the county immediately as soon as you start receiving those SSI benefits. For more information about A and D and the eligibility around that, please check out the link in the description below. Another financial assistance program is called TANF, or the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, also known as Colorado Works. Um, this financial program is available in most counties in Colorado, but definitely make sure that it's available in your county if you want to apply for it. Um, this benefit is also received through an EBT card. It is financial cash assistance for families um, who need help becoming more self-sufficient and just need some extra help um, in supporting their family. People who receive TANF get their own case manager so they can help um, the individual or the family who is receiving TANF uh, become more self-sufficient so they won't need the cash benefit anymore. The amount provided by TANF depends on the uh, circumstances and the size of household. For more information about TANF, please check out the description because uh, I put another link down there below for you. Another financial assistance program through the county is OAP, also known as Old Age Pension. It's financial cash assistance for those who are 60 years of age or older and are considered low income to help meet their minimum monthly income amount. The minimum monthly income depends year to year, um, but at the moment, this cannot exceed $821. OAPA is associated with Medicaid, so you get both of those benefits. If you're not approved for Medicaid, you can still be eligible for old age, old age pension B. For more information about this, please check out the link in the description below. There are lots of other benefits that the county and the state can provide for community members. Um, but the last one I'm going to talk about today is just the uh, live transit program. Those eligible for this program can get 40% off RTD fares throughout the state or in your county. Uh, please check out the link in the description below to check out more details about how that program works. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot more programs than the ones that I've mentioned today. Um, so please check out the uh, benefits website from your county just to check out what's available for you. To apply for these county and state benefits, the best way to do that is through the Colorado Peak website, which I'll show you a little bit about how that works. Um, all of these applications will require some kind of verification paper, such as a pay stub or a benefit letter, um, letters of employment, um, or confirming resignation, et cetera, just depending on what you're applying for. Okay, this is what the Colorado Peak website looks like. As you can see, I've created an account for this. Um, my name's at the top. You can get online assistance, um, change the language or get an interpreter. This is what the website looks like when you're not signed in. But once I sign in here, this is what it looks like. You can start a new application or link your benefits from another Colorado Peak account. Um, and I just wanted to give an example as to what this looks like so it's easier to navigate. This overview page is where you can look at your applications or start a new application. This benefits part is looking at what benefits you already have. The report my changes is to report any changes such as moving to a different county or um, some kind of employment change. This redetermination recertification is important to do to update your benefits at each year and make sure that you get them the, the next year. Payments are for payments. Um, and then there's a few other tabs here. It's pretty self-explanatory once you just kind of sign in and look at what's over here. So 
You can also send in your verification forms through this website when you're signed in. Um, it'll give some instruction when you do need to do that. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm glad we could talk a little bit more about state and county benefits. Um, sometimes they can be a little complicated or difficult to understand. So um, again, please check out those links in the description below to get a little bit more information. Um, but I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Next time we're going to talk a little bit more about the family and ch child related programs that the state and county offers. Please check out our YouTube channel as we're going to be putting out videos every week. Um, also check out our Facebook and Instagram pages for content updates about that. Uh, we're going to leave the links for those in the description below. Please leave a comment or ask any questions below because uh, we will address it at the end of the month in our live stream. Um, and we'd really appreciate some um, questions that we can maybe go over um, in that. So again, thanks so much and have a great rest of your day.